Alright, hello everyone. Um, it's me, me, Little Miss Midnight. Now, um, normally I would not annotate over these drawings of mine, but you see the drawing is like 20 minutes long, and I don't think anyone is gonna sit by and watch my uh, video for 20 minutes with just music playing in the background, so I thought I would speak over it to the best of my ability. Um, so please forgive me, this is mostly unscripted. Because, yeah, why not? So, let's go over this drawing. So, right now I'm doing a Ensemble Star drawing of Natsumi and Hansu. Just uh, based off magic, because he really loves his magic, Natsumi. I, I'm not too familiar with him, but he's such a cool kid. So I, And uh, I have his 5 star bloomed, so I thought, why not? And yes, I'm back at Ensemble Star's Hell. Um, another story for another time. So. I'm currently doing the lines. Uh, the lines are in a darkish maroon red, simply because um, you never want to draw or uh, draw in black or, or white or shade or color in pure white, pure black, because that's not that color doesn't really exist in the current world. Um, so you want to go just a little bit left or right to of black or white, depending on what you want. So um, you keep. That's why I do dark red or dark depending on mood. We're going to change it later, which you'll see later. So, um, when it comes to the magic wand there, I was using a um, the curve tool to make it look more straight, more geometric, because it is a very straight shape. Um, when it comes to clothes, or curves, hair, I do that manually with the pen tool. Uh, the pen tool is uh, one of my favourites. I mean, you could do this by... Um, they're just the old-fashioned way, without not, not on the vector layer. But you need the bonuses of having a vector layer is that if you do make a mistake or you don't like the way something looks, you can just go to um, vector point and just edit the line instead of just erasing it. If you just did it the old-fashioned way, so when it comes to line art, I do suggest being always doing a vector. And you can be wild and do it just the regular way, but um, I personally don't do it. Sometimes I do forget, but we're all humans. Um, doing the line of the hair is my favourite. So here we are again with the shoulder pad. I did use the line tool this time, which is purely straight, um, not like a curve tool where you can curve it up. So I did that for the shoulder pad because I wanted to look this I wanted to look as straight as possible. Um, I continue to do line art. This was a very long process because I underestimated how detailed this outfit for Natsumi is. I <laughs> Just zooming in and out, I was like, Jesus Christ, this is so detailed. Uh, it was ridiculous. So, what am I doing here? Um, oh, yes, just erasing, I think. Erasing certain parts that overlap. Uh, and here we are, we're still in the color. Um, if you're wondering why it's purple, that's just the magic wand tool to show you what you selected. Um, so, it's a bit easier on the eyes. And in here, I am selecting all the little gaps that the magic wand tool missed. So, um, it's kind of obvious because everything's in purple, what you selected, so you got to make sure you do that. And now with the shady part, I um, I airbrush um, all around the face to make it not look so flat. A bit of, add a bit of dimension to it. And I continue to do this with a bit more darker colours, of course. Um, more airbrushes with a darker side. Now, we're skipping over because it's a very long video. Um, so I'm just showing the highlights, but um, I'm highlighting the face, the nose, and the cheek. I just thought I would put a blush, but it didn't look really right, so um, I eventually got uh, got rid of it because it just didn't look right. I go back and I re-highlight the face to the best of my ability, and ah oh yes, and then I then I do like the little proper shading, the cast overs, is it called? Ah, uh, I don't know art technology. So now I was doing the hair. I'll do multiple layers. I normally airbrush around the hair like I did with the skin. And then I go into detail. Um, the smaller the brush, the more detail. First, I just like use a first brush and just, you know, do the basic sh hair, um, shading with a big brush, cover most of the flatness. And then as I go smaller and darker, that's when I add the extra line or two. And then, of course, make the tips darker, uh, just my style. Now, I haven't shaded the under part of Natsumi's hair because 
underneath his hair the lower part is white so I didn't show that part at all because I'd be wasting my time I mean I'm gonna do it anyway again for the white hair so I didn't bother so I use new layer basic um, pen tool number two um, because it's just more sensitive I guess has a nice tip at the end so I, I color this by hand even though I even though I really didn't like doing this by hand so um, quick I uh, lock the layer so I wouldn't go into the red hair and just put quick shading very quickly and I continue to do it here and then I get the water tool and I blend it so it looks more natural together um, even though they're yeah, a little bit white so you can see like a gradient effect just it just slowly turns his hair to white um, and this is the first time I did that so I'm glad it looked out well now with the marker tool just some highlights um, I got this highlighting technique from one of my favorite artists that does Alchemist for Aichu can't remember the name on top of my head but I like the way they highlight the hair so I decided to borrow that technique um, this is very simple I used the marker tool and did some pen pressure I was able to um, press the pen harder to where the, it shines the brightest um, so onto Anzu's hair as you can see I the first sh layer of shading very basic just give you uh, give you an outline of where the things are gonna go and then the, the second color I just want to add an extra line or two if I see it's necessary to add a bit more um, detail and what else yes uh, Anzu's hair was really fun to shade. I mean, hair is so much fun to shade. And here's where I noticed I missed a few parts of selector, so I'll quickly marker them up. And same deal with Natsumi's hair. Uh, I'd highlight it again. Oh, this was really nice. The marker tool was such a good tool. I love it. So, highlighted. Follow a like imaginary line of where the highlight will go. You don't you don't just put it anywhere. You put it to where you think the light would hit. Uh, there is no correct way, but I mean, you can make an educated guess. Guess I mean, you can't like put lines in every part of the hair. Um, just look up images where you can go. Um, good ideas of your favorite artists, how they highlight hair. That's a good way to start. Um, not saying my way is correct. I'm probably doing this wrong, but there you go. You learn one way or another. So, uh, I continue to highlight. I'm just missing parts here and there. I'll decide in where I should highlight. Now, next part I was moving onto the vest, and <sighs> okay, this part here I did on new layer the lines. I hold it shift, and I cl click on the pen tool to get those straight geometric lines. I right, make sure you do some new layer. So I did this on a new layer. I clipped the layer so I wouldn't mess with the blue layer, so I can completely shade the lines without affecting the blue layer and I was able to do that very nice and neatly or else if I did the old fashioned way it would look like a mess so I did the same thing with the ribbon there as you can see now using the select tool to make sure I didn't miss any gaps I mean you're not perfect you're gonna miss some but you know do it then and there so just I was looking up references how to that this artist shaded the hand I thought that's that looks good or you know that's uh, I remembered how to do it um, so I quickly did that did that with everyone's hands uh, of course what else so just just basic shading of the hand I don't know what else to say um, uh, continue to shade what else did I do what am I doing uh, oh yes I think yeah, we're moving on to the shoulder pads now. Oh, I can't see very well. So I'm selecting everything that needs to be red. Um, yeah, I missed the line there. Because I did underestimate the detail of this outfit. So airbrush everything around it to give it a bit more life, I guess. More detail. And it was very... Not big, there, was once a, there wasn't big spaces to shade, so just shaded everything. Very basic. Now, here, this part of... The um, shoulder pad, these little feather things at the end, these strings, I treat them like hair, so I do shade up and a bit on the top to make sure, to give an idea that it's not just, oh, it doesn't look like a broom is what I'm trying to say, um, give a bit of detail. And then I did the buttons, 
and I added highlights to these little shoulder pads because I imagine them to be like some kind of metal surface and you gotta those metal surfaces have like a really solid shine to it really flat not like when you shine hair there's a bit it's a bit softer that was um, shading metal is hard and now I was doing the eyes and the magic wand just hates selecting line art or spaces that are really close together or thin so you gotta really use the manual select tool and then I do the eyes um, I do the eyes um, a shade darker than their hair just because you know eyelashes are real people they're not always black and then so I airbrush the edges of the eyes dark and then a little, a little bit of highlight in the middle of the eyes and next um, yeah, same with um, before sort of airbrushing around I use the marker tool and I did this new art eye style on the go just to try something new um, so this is all with the marker tool most of my artwork is done with the marker tool so I did the iris first and then I did the pupil afterwards and then of course I added airbrushed it a bit more black on the top to give more of a gradient look and I did the same for Anzu's eyes um, I was really worried because I never done this before I was recording and the video was long enough so the marker tool and then I, with the marker tool I smudged the edges and then I continued to do this and same with the pirate pupil keep doing it I might try not to go too black not to erase the other the other blues you don't want to do that so now I'm moving to the like the white part of the eyes um, I make a new layer and just use the basic pen tool um, nothing special unless I shade the eyes um, I think I clipped the layer or I didn't uh, oh I didn't either but uh, must have felt like I rippled that day so that's that next part is the hat. Ah, oh, yes, the hat. So, selected the hats. I was getting really tired at this point. Um, uh, so I just, I liked the way the hat was shaded in the drawing. It made me give an idea that it probably was a silk hat because it's highlighted really brightly in the drawing. So, I use that as a, like a way, giving me an idea how to do it. And with the marker tool again, I just smudge and where I needed to be brighter, I just pressed my pen hard on my tablet. And next were the beads. Yeah, oh no, this is um, the, trans the stars. Since these stars were like trans, like, they had no line art, they're like hollow in a way. So I, I, I did this all by hand. Um, and yeah, very simple. I uh, didn't really work on that too much because, well, it will find the way it was to me. And I think this is the beads after I select songs. <laughs> so, uh, this is where the part I realised. Um, there was no metal at the uh, at the corner of his hat. There was just beads flying around and... Well, and so I had to like redraw the lines again. Wasn't too much of a bother, but I wish I didn't have to do it. It looked really good. But I was too far at this point to start again. So with just a marker to, marker to I ha airbrush, bar, shade and highlight. Um, what's this part here? Ah, uh, this is the transparent part. So transparency, how to do it? You just get your basic colour and put it on the top and lower the opacity. So when you shade so when you make a new layer and put a colour underneath it, it looks transparent. You can tell because the colour gets lighter. That's a cool trick. Uh, I don't normally shade transparent things. Not my doodle even the way it is, but you can shade it. You like this particular drawing I didn't think it was necessary, but do correct me if you if I'm wrong. Um, and I imagine these ribbons were really silky, so that's why I added a bit of a highlight like with the silk hat. And then I got the border of the ribbon, which is gold, and I did the same thing. Of course, on a new layer. And this is when I realised I missed a bit of the middle ribbon colour. So after I did shading of this gold border, I went back and I fixed it. 
Um, just eyedropper tool is an amazing tool in those situations. Airbrush and simple shading and we're on to the next part. Eventually, so make up my mind. Alright, shade, shade, shade. And highlight again to match the pink. Next part, we we're just filling in the stuff that I missed, so don't expect to get everything. I mean, you're only human, especially with detailed pictures, your eyes go all over the place. So, just filling in everything that I missed because it, I do notice this one at the final picture, it annoys me a lot. <laughs> so, now we're finally working on the background, which is 10 times less effort required. So, um, I think I was making folders of. Um, yeah, I will make folders eventually because it did get messy and it was getting big. Oh uh, yes, and this is where we were doing the lines. Now the lines, I'm, I locked the lines so I could color it in without coloring in the lines where I'm making a mess on the outside. Um, I color them so the lines can look more li life, like the picture looks more lively. They're just kind of having it back. It's something I just recently learned and I want to do it again. It was the f this was the first time I was doing coloured lines like in this way. Normally I would do it from the beginning, but I thought I want it to match. I want the lines to match the colours when I finish. Um, problem here was for me that I did my line up on all the one layer. So some parts were getting coloured green when they weren't meant to be green, or some parts were red on a blue line. It was. As I said, it was the first time doing this and I probably would do the line art in different parts of the line art different layers. So I was using the airbrush tool at this point to make it more soft and um, just to make it blend more. Um, I was really starting to enjoy this technique. It looked really it's making a difference in my eyes. Just coloured lines and everything. It gives it more life. It really does. It just looks better than black. Honestly, but of course some um, do black lines be fine, but I'm starting to like this style a bit more So next We're working on the background now. We're still doing lines what we are doing Let's see Ye Yeah, I'm working on the lines on <laughs> the lines background. Oh gosh, so I'm doing the background Um, I was magic these pink lines. I imagine they're like magic. So I used pen tool to do it so I get that nice flick at the end, and then I use a water tool to blend it around. And this part here, we're just putting confetti, nothing special, just dab dots where you think it'll be necessary. Don't overdo it. Um, I'm just control and balance. So I just put more colors everywhere because I really want this to be magical, give that magic effect to look magical. I can't remember to that word. So anyway, and. I went back to my pink layers, I think, and I started to highlight them so it can stand out a bit more. Oh wait, no, I'm not doing that. Sorry. Oh, unscripted, eh? So, I was doing stars, and I was really influenced by the stars in Natsumi's five-star card. I want them to have really rounded corners. So I thought, what if I draw them like a flower, but just add more points? So I followed like this flower pattern, and then of course, we're just making them like stars. And I copied the colours from Natsumi's 5 star bloom card and because I do like the colour composition in that card so a few more stars and then I think I, yep, I locked the layer, airbrushed a bit them so they can look, pop up a bit more because they really don't stand out on their own like that so with that then I used the marker tool to colour them so it looked a bit Poppy, bubblegum, cute. Uh, like the, the, the kind of sh that shine you see in a balloon. That was the effect I was going for here. Um, of course, I didn't want to know if they should look like balloon stars or have the balloon shine effect. And that's when we start shining the highlight, the little magical pink lines. Got ahead of myself there. And. This is the final part. I decided to add some stars in the back. Of course, I wanted it to look more solid. So I just used the pen tool again and I started just to shade in manually. 
<coughs> the stars. I decided to go with three because three is just a good number. And I hold the shift tool here so I can get the straight corners and the straight lines um, so you can look more defined. So when I added those lines, I decided why not make them like different because boring, they look pretty boring, just filled in like that. So holding shift, colored in white, um, make sure they all didn't look the same. Make each star look defined on its own. And what else did I do? Ah, yes, I added text. I normally don't add text in my work, but this was <laughs> this line was the purpose of why this piece was created. Um, so I wrote everything in caps, and magic was in lower cases and with more fancy handwriting. I had my signature, and there we go. That's my whole piece in a nutshell. Just have some zoomed in moments of my uh, piece. Um, overall, I'm really happy with it. I'm glad that things I tried the first time didn't work out well. I am noticing some mistakes, but I guess we all do at the end. We always notice some mistakes. Um, but I'm really happy to the coloured lines. Also, I worried it wasn't look, going to look well, but it did. Um, I'm really glad the text flows well with the piece. Um, the magic looks bright. Um, so I'm really happy with this piece, and I hope you are too. Until next time, thank you for listening and watching. Bye.